looking at the playlist again. And like Jazz put best pussy in the world. <laughs> I told you to look at the. I told you to check the like, song. Like for Vecna, the Bruh. best pussy in the world. Like if that's put... how you gonna freak it. Yeah, nah, we... if my nigga was to put that on, be like, I I gotta get Jazz up out of there because that nigga he's dangerous. That's kind of wild. Like, Vecna be like, no, nah, you gotta keep her. You got <laughs> like, you ain't going nowhere. We gotta like, keep that down here. What's up? What's up with yeah. the bats and Demogorgon? Y'all want to try that? That's nasty as shit. Yeah, that's that's kind of wild. Well, we are recording, so Jazz, whenever you're ready to get it started, be my guest. Was over here acting like he was about to take over the reins and shit earlier today. Who did that? Me? Chris? When I did oh, that? Yeah, Chris, I'm gonna just make wait. That shit. So uh, sure it wasn't not. Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, y'all, y'all ready? Jason ain't care if it was me as long as it wasn't him. Uh, <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, you know what I'm saying? If yeah. I got to step up to it, you know? All right, here we go. Anyway, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the What's It Good Though podcast, where we review, discuss, debate, and disagree on movies and TV shows. I am one of your hosts. My name is Jazz. I am joined with Pastor Chris. How you doing, Pastor? It don't fucking matter. And we are also joined here with Sinner Jason. Jason, how are you doing this evening? I'm, I'm good. I can't complain. Thank you. That's for what's up. Me. That's what's up. Got some good energy going on today. Pray good forward. energy. Good energy. <laughs> yeah, some energy. All right. <laughs> all right. So as y'all pretty much know, we will be discussing, well, doing our part two of Stranger Things season four, episodes four, uh, five through seven. Last episode, we pretty much did one through four. So if you are not caught up, this is your spoiler alert. But before you turn the pod off, please like, subscribe, follow, leave reviews. We love reviews, so just pretty much let us know if there's anything, any critiques. But if you're too nitpicky, get that shit out of here. But um, yeah, we will be pretty much discussing episodes five through seven, Stranger Things season four. Chris, what you got? Probably not a damn thing. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't know what jazz is eat or drink or whatever's going on today. Did you have a good day, Jess? How was your day? How's your I week been? Got it. Nah, you've been pissing me off all week. Oh. You, <laughs> Wait, what did I do? Wait, don't worry it don't about even, it. You know. It don't even matter. Uh, Stranger Things season four, part two. We told you we was coming back with a sequel and we like to keep our word around here. So uh, episode five, Jason. This episode was, after episode four was born as hell, I'm gonna be honest with you. So can you? <laughs> <laughs> like we, we go from four and then we go to this it wasn't like you know so you can you can handle uh the recap for episode five and what you thought about it <clears throat> got you got you so um you know we go in transition to episode five uh, max you know he finally saved her um but we catch back up with the cali crew uh the cali crew was in the shootout uh with the military where they're looking to take l um but you know, they're on the way, and the cop that they have in the car with them um, ends up dying. Um, and they decide to to bury this man just in some abandoned um, abandoned car lot just in the middle of nowhere. But, you know, Argyle, he wants to put he wants to put their name on a box, you know, as a tombstone over this man's dead body, which is... He want to get caught. Dude, which is wild <laughs> as hell in retrospect. They need to... If smoking does that, please just say no. <laughs> the campaign that. wasn't in, the campaign wasn't ready yet, but just <laughs> just say no because that's a little wild. But you know the most the the most developing thing thing within this episode, which is here, was um, well two things. One, um, they figure out that the officer left them a pen, and in that pen there was a number. Um, and that number was supposedly to get them the help or assistance that they need. Um, but the second thing. Um, was Will is opening up more to Mike? Um, any any ideas what what what, we, what that may be about? Because I mean he you know he kind of keeps you know alluding back to some earlier things. But what, what y'all got? He's just Early. saying he's just saying look when you got strong feelings, it's kind of you you're scared to express those to somebody because you're not sure how they will react. And I'm sure we've all been in a situation like that before. I mean. <laughs> projection we are you saying that you've never been in that situation before no I'm, I'm just saying it seemed like you you know you had issues projecting your feelings and you trying to say it we never mind continue i'm sorry no i was just trying to relate to will yeah but since you making it seem like it's just on me gentlemen I mean, have y'all been in a situation to where you try to express your feelings 
and you were afraid to because you weren't sure how they would react. Jason? Um, have I? I don't. Uh, you know what? Tonight. I'm not really good. I'm not good with communication or speaking about those actual things. So, <clears throat> um, I I would probably try to express it the best way I can. But it wouldn't be nothing that a person would know. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna let them know it's not gonna be a situation where, like, I mean, but if I did this, would would it be bad or would it be a good situation? I wouldn't <laughs> leave. I wouldn't leave it up to I interpretation. Leave it up to fate. Yeah. yeah. You Why know. did you make your voice soft? That's like Chris sound. <laughs> 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 so basically, Jason said he ain't beating around the bush. That's what it. That's what it. Yeah, I'm gonna beat. <laughs> well, yeah, but we're talking about the bush, not the. I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat the bush too. I'm, I'm not. I ain't afraid of no hair. Uh, oh, shave the. How did, we? How did? Okay. No, let's get we back on about, track. Okay. We're talking about Will, Chris. I'm beating. He trying to get. Okay. Um, so nah. we find out <laughs> that was awkward uh, they find they find that they try to call the number and it it sounds like a computer it sounds like a fax machine um and they don't really know where to go but um mike um decides he was like there's one place to go um to nevada um which we find out in nevada that is where dustin's lover who saved them last season Susie, um is <laughs> Why you call her? <laughs> it lover. is. They love. They they made that it. Cr- they made that it camp. Bae. So like that's that's Bay, that's Bay. So um, outside of this, uh, then we jump back into uh, go back into Russia. Uh, we go into Russia. Enzo's caught. Hopper's caught. Joyce and Murray are caught. They pretty much fucked up in Russia. Um, they we don't know what's going to happen, what's going on, but you know you have Murray. He um, kind of talks about that he's done karate, so we kind of see how that you know how that's going to play out. And he's in this plane and he decides to fight the pilot, you know, without no type of backup plan, no type of security. It's just you know when you put Murray and leave a woman in charge, you see what happens. Just kind of gets they survived. They so. Leave. And barely, barely. <clears throat> they survived and they were no longer captured. So obviously Murray and having a woman in charge helped them out. I don't know. This motherfucker. Anyway. You, that, is that what you have chose to do? What would you what you, what would you have done if you were stuck in a plane? First off, y'all already know from the last episode, I wouldn't have put up no fucking money anyway, so I wouldn't <laughs> have been on that fucking plane. So yeah, Jazz yeah. Jazz would have been at the crib like, what can I do with this forty K? Just I would forget. have went on vacation. So you're not to Russia, I'm assuming. Who the fuck goes to Russia for vacation? I mean, if you're trying to save someone, maybe. Um, Who's trying to save anybody? Chris, listen. did you listen to our last pod? I've <laughs> listened to it. I'm sort of like, never mind. Um, but yeah, Jason pretty much ran it down. One thing he missed at the beginning was uh, the episode is called The Nina Project. And of course, we saw the beginning, L. Um, L was in the Hawkins Laboratory. And uh, I feel like Owens at this point, you know, watching the show, I feel like he sort of betrayed Elle. I know what his long-term goals was, but he sent it right back to Brenner, who she despises um, because of all the trauma that he's put her through. Uh, We saw that happen at the beginning of the episode. And, um, you know, she tried to get away. She tried to escape. Um, She tried to run out the the lab, um, something Jazz wouldn't be able to do, put in that same position. But luckily (laughs) she wasn't there. So you would have uh, rolled out of the lab and got not gotten far. So as I said, Ram, as I said, Jazz wouldn't have been able to run out the lab. Chris um, would have been able to roll. Okay, time out. Jazz, what's, what's, what's up? We good? I want to have Wait, a great. How do you attack me and then no. be mad that I reacted to it? You attacked me <laughs> before that. Like I couldn't even say how I was going off, off top. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I actually didn't forget that part. I was gonna come back too because <clears throat> that's probably the most well, that's a new storyline that's being introduced in this new arc that we've yeah. gotten into. So it's developing. So we get L. Um, Dr. Brenner is back. So Dr. Brenner has been dead for about two seasons at this point. Um, but now we see Dr. Brenner is back alive. Um, you know, I'm because I see L, what happened? Wait. Uh, he died? I missed that. <laughs> I missed it too. Like, oh, okay. I, I know my memory. Back to life? 
I know my memory ain't the best, but I was curious what happened. What What do you think he went to? I uh, thought he was just fucked up for a while. I had to get his had to regroup. Yeah, yeah I thought what, he was like in hiding you? or something. Yeah. yeah, I remember. Okay, so no, and, and enlighten us, like tell it like a quick what happened. Ale killed him. Oh, well, so, well I mean, she thought she did. Obviously, yeah, I was going to say clearly she didn't, but uh, yeah. I mean, it's. I mean, look, look what we're dealing with. A lot of this stuff is what we didn't think, and <laughs> is what it is when it oh, comes man. to it. Okay, so Doctor Brenner is back. I presume. <laughs> let me say, I presume him to be dead. I'm a fact check myself. <laughs> I was confused. I was confused. I didn't want to say nothing. Yeah. Then I saw Jazz's reaction. Jason said saying. he was dead for two years and came back like we got zombies oh, walking I'm, around. I'm, I'm, as far as when it comes to it, so you know, Doctor Brenner comes back. Um, Else blindsided, like you said, but they, you know, they want to be able to get her powers back. So, in order to do this, um, they put her into the Nina Project, which is a way of triggering her memories or suppressed memories um, that she's trying to hide from herself in order to get back to help. Um, so now, with is that looking at the scenario there, would you guys be able to go back to one of your suppressed memories to save? The universe, which I, which I'd be willing to do that. The universe. So Wait. the mask wouldn't wouldn't qualify for a suppressed memory, and neither would twenty twenty one. So if you had to go back to a traumatic experience to face it again, which how do, would you react? How L is reacting? Can I pick who I'm saving, or is it just like an abundance? Because some folks I don't want to save. <laughs> But it's the world. Is that yes. selfish? I said it's the world. Yeah, it's you the said world. It's not, so it's not a it's not a situation. It's, it's the world, <laughs> and you know, and you know, Vecna's not picking and choosing. He he is starting at Hawkins, but I feel like he's trying to. Once he gets here, he's going, he going crazy. I mean, sure. <laughs> you don't sound. Like, I guess like, it just depends on what mood I'm in. <laughs> well, hopefully we catch you in a good mood, because damn. What? What um, mood am I in when y'all pick me up and when y'all tell me the situation? <laughs> if I done had a shitty day at work, Chance, we need you to save the universe. I'm be like, mm, what do I get out of this? <laughs> you get to live. I mean, that's the main thing. You know, you're not, you get, you die if you don't, but you get to live if you do this. I mean, I guess that those are my only options. <laughs> that's kind of yes. that's, that's, that's actually very scary. Um, thinking about it it is it is just looking at like i said with her support just going through l's story from what we know so far it's like we, we know it's dark and like i get l has been getting bullied the entire season no yeah. matter like from when when she's a kid like she's like six or remember, don't remember she's like six or seven when we go mm -hmm. in these flashbacks like that's wild and these kids are like just, you know, she's always been the outcast, so she doesn't fit in with the kids like her. She doesn't fit in with the mouth breathers. Elle really has no self, like, no peace, no matter where she is. And, she, you know, she's finally getting that. And it's like, man, it's like dealing with it is just super unsettling, just looking at her, um, dealing with them. But she does meet um, an orderly uh, within the facility. Uh, the orderly is taking a liking to her. Um, so what, what, how y'all feel about this disorderly um, that we meet? Doesn't have a name. He's just going by Mr. Orderly. Creep. Yeah, we he's can, uh, we can very call creepy. Him Mr. Creep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's um, extremely creepy and very suspect. He's super creepy. I yeah. mean, I guess it's definitely one of those situations to where just to have a a light in all the darkness that Elle was pretty much going through while she was dealing with these flashbacks and having somebody that's genuinely nice to her, mm -hmm. but then looking at the past few episodes anytime somebody is trying to be well what we portray as genuinely nice to l they always have a, a hidden agenda yeah so i was Facts. super suspect Facts. anyway i was just like i i don't know if i can trust this person because and i felt so bad for l because she's a very trust trusting individual yeah and just like you so said like she's just been through so much and i'm just like damn i just i just want her to stop going through all of this shit it's just, it, yeah, it she, sucks. And it's, and it's fucked up because she doesn't have a mother or a father to right. teach her mm -hmm. or guide her with any of these things. The closest thing she had <clears throat> so far, like, truly has been Hopper. 
um, right. you know, she has the joints because Papa, you know, which that's that that entire facility it's is creepy, hell. It's bro. It's so just, creepy. Yeah, man. which is crazy. Like it's why just everything about it is just weird. But Hopper has been the best person, but you know they weren't on the best of terms at the at the last of you know when they seen each other. So, um, and that kind of plays out. Hopper kind of talks about that with Enzo. Um, they kind of discuss, <clears throat> which was like a you know like a dope thing. Um, just the worry you have for your kid, even when y'all are not, you know, with that situation, you know, yeah. like, like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like just dealing with that. But, um, after we leave out of Nevada, um, then we go back to Hawkins. Hawkins is in, a Patrick, um, uh, was killed. That's, that's how, um, well, that's, that's at the end of the episode, right? Later on in the episode. Yeah. Yeah. It's later on. Pat, you know, later on in the episode. So, uh, we go back to Hawkins. Um, Chrissy's funeral um, is about to happen, and Patrick is tripping out. Patrick kind of see he sees the clock, so we know his time. Um, time is coming up um, as he sees it, and after they leave the funeral, Jason is like, "Hey, we need to go find this guy. We gotta look. We gotta get hit the hit the highs, hit the lows, and figure out where he is." But someone mentioned Reefer Rick, which we already know. You know, mm-hmm. that's what we've been hiding out at. Um, so they reach out to Reefer Rick. When I reached, we went out to Reefer Rick's, um, his abandoned house, um, and they spot Eddie. Um, Eddie is trying to get away in a boat. You know, they get into the water. Um, I don't know why Patrick was following these white boys, but, you know, that's what he chose to do. <laughs> um, and, and they kind of kind of offed my guy. Um, I feel like he has, outside the wife, um, when Victor Creel watched his wife get killed, this was one of the looked like super gruesome just watching it happen because he got pulled underwater then he got through way in the air bones cracked dropped in the water and that's you know how the how the episode ends so yeah so we are at the end of episode five you think Beckman was racist because he kind of fucked up patrick uh yes just like I, I, just I, like I, yeah he, just he like nobody else like that yeah that reminded me of ghostface and scream three and you know he did Tyson. <laughs> so I felt the way. I'm like, hold up, it's a little pattern going on. Here. <laughs> but wow. um, yeah, another thing I, I took note when uh, Dustin was speaking, of course, we have Victor Creel from episode um, four. We saw that was obviously um, Freddy Krueger. Um, and we had a Freddy Krueger name drop from Dustin. He actually brought up the movie. So I thought that was a nice tie-in he with did. this one. Yeah, he that was did. when I first watched it, I was like, oh, that's sick. So Also, that picture that Max was drawing, yeah. look, it was mm-hmm. very similar to, you know, that, that nightmare house, you know, that drawing just with all the reds and yeah. all the different colors they put together, uh, which, you know, that's what they ended up, you know, going out to to the house to investigate further to see what they could do or how they can assist there, which, you know, leads us um, into chapter six, um, the dive. Yeah, the dive, uh... This episode was interesting. Of course, you had Jason. He's obviously upset with everything that's going on. He tries to convince everyone that Eddie is like a vessel for Satan or something crazy like that. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, he's, I, I understand it, but at the same time, he's just kind of tripping because. I don't understand none of that shit. Like, what a, I mean, he's just, yeah, he's destroyed. You know, he's his girl and his, his, black teammate <laughs> he just got taken <laughs> out he lost two black teammates by the way so i know he's really flipping out because oh, his basketball, so, so basketball team got me, knows, he can't say well at least i have one black friend he can't say none of it Damn. And then the basketball team <laughs> he had yeah. one there, there was there was one other black well there was, it was one left because it was oh one, it was one left Pat, and it was oh, yeah. the guy who actually put them in direction of reefer rick house like, oh, okay. Black people are just too resourceful, and I hate it. Go find your own friends. Why are y'all giving up? <laughs> like I, I'm sick of this. We always, you know what I'm saying? Like we always being the ones that have to to take care of the the, the people, the family yeah. in that situation, man. Yeah, but uh, we saw the Cali crew. They went to Utah in this episode, and they finally linked up with Dustin's Bay. Had a house full of yeah bad kids. Man, All them kids needed their ass beat. Like had some... every last. One of them, bro. Yeah, about me. a dozen vibes. <laughs> fucking control, bro. And a daddy. The the parents in this in these, this show are useless. Yeah, Outside of Joyce, they're all useless. Like, yeah, 
You right. Uh, you right. Oh, I was about to say, whoa. Well, hold on. Well, remember, she don't know a kid is smoking. She don't know the kid is fighting. She don't and she know. just she, dropped she everything just to kids. go get Bay. So, <laughs> Jazz, mean, feel I, away about that 40K. But bro. no, I'm just <laughs> saying, I guess if you're trying to pick who's the best parent, all right, I guess it's Joyce, but that bitch got a lot of issues, too. So yeah, I feel like I feel like Mike and Nancy, you know, I don't know, but I, Mike and Nancy, mama, she pretty cool. Is she the one with the hair that look like oodles and noodles? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Her she her and her husband be having too many issues because isn't her husband her the husband one that's is, like just yeah. lock the kids up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, he's so nah, nonchalant about everything. The dad, just... the dad tired of the kids coming to his house. Like, bro, y'all don't go nowhere else. Y'all always here eating up. They the eating food. up his food. Dustin took like four pancakes. Dustin <laughs> wild. Dustin wild for that. He said he said I need something for the road. I bro, what? Crazy. Get the fuck out of my house. Yeah, but it, was... it is funny uh, that scene where they were at Susie's house after they were able to pretty much um distract her dad with all them badass kids and to mm -hmm. look up the information that uh mike and everybody needed susie's running downstairs three dudes behind her her dad walking up the stairs he's like stop running i'm like so hold on wait a minute <laughs> so, wait, susie's so, a kid wait, so stop. i'm like so this this is cool because you don't know none of them and you just see your daughter go downstairs leaving an upstairs bedroom with three dudes behind her and you don't think who the fuck are these kids and what the fuck were y'all just doing as a dad let me ask you this jason oh. if you run past i, yeah. I ain't even gotta say <laughs> nothing can't, else look, like, you can't even come in my house and and if you come to my house you better to speak to me you're not fit to date these people that came in the house and ran through the house they done plotted on you in your house, man. This, this, these these keys is running running rampage. Yeah. Okay. There's no structure got, at all. You got the lad, yeah. the older, then the kid that's watching the younger kids she out, get and, high. out smoking, getting high. Past the duchy with old Argyle. <laughs> <laughs> Argyle and Eden. You think, they, you think they smoking that Chrissy pack? <laughs> it's saying, they know it might it. be it's saying like they ain't never in the, they never here so yeah they smoking some <laughs> but i did they have know a what question. they do they better i did have a question though which police department would you rather protect you jason oh. <laughs> jason did you just steal my question jason bro man don't they tell trash. me you just stole my question they are trash i'm gonna let you finish every I'm, a, I'm gonna let you i know you we we hear they, we they don't know though. Right they here. don't know so go ahead and ask your question i'm so, sitting here like i was about to on the I, scale he's about to kill it of hawkins police department man or woodsboro <laughs> police department bruh who do you want to protect you and your family and we have to choose i'm assuming you have to pick bruh <laughs> I'm sick because that was I damn sure had that as a question. I'm like these cops <laughs> trash as fuck. Bro, all of bro, Woods, bro. Okay, we took it off screen. Screen five, Woods, bro. They left uh, Tara at the hospital by herself. <laughs> like you got a killer on the loose, so that's a dub. And then this police, I don't know. I'm not, Hawkins. You let a whole high school student take your entire uh, yeah. beating from you. And riled up the parents, and you sitting there like, but we got a curfew. They're not listening. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> I'm just. I mean, I feel like the Woodsboro police were taken more serious, but realistically, I wouldn't trust neither one of them because they both fucking trash. Bruh. Yeah. But you I, did have more Woodsboro cops get killed. No Hawkins cops got killed, and plus Hawkins got nice ass. Uh, that fine cop still on there. So sure. actually, let me go for Hawkins cops. So just That's based off of there. looks. Just mm. based off of looks, Jazz gonna die. Look, realistically, if I'm in a, if I'm in their hands, I'm gonna die any fucking way. I mean, you might be right. You so they might as well look good, right. but she die. Okay. Uh, yeah, give me Woodsboro just because. I mean, give me Hawkins rather because Woodsboro they left Terry at the hospital like it was nothing, and I just feel like at this point they've been having like killer with Ghostface what five movies now. You can't figure nothing out or stop it. You just unserious. Nice. Yeah. They always get They all yeah. They But yeah, we kinda go back. Like I said, we you know, we speaking of the, the Hawkins police and we are talking about Jason and how he took over um the town hall meeting. It kinda was, <clears throat> um kinda was played into fruition based on the season opener um this year when he was rallying the basketball yeah. team. We know yeah. he can grab we know he can speak. Yeah. We know he can grab a town. Um, just as far as when it 
just him speaking to the people. Like he's gonna, he knows how to say it. He knows how to get to them, and he knows the right things to pull. Which, like I said, he was using the Bible to pull the people together, and they pretty much rallied to go kill our kids um, or get our kids. Because I mean, what they gonna do when they get to them? Like honestly, they are gonna probably do um, <clears throat> what's that? What's the old? old old book where they go and get the kids and they burn them up they think they witches the, the oh, same like, uh, witch trials yeah the same <laughs> they finna they fit get them and they finna kill them because what else can they do with them they can't control it um as far as with um you know when it comes to the powers but um then we you know leave here and we follow where our kids are uh, which they are on a uh, on the hunt to see or try to locate eddie before jason locates eddie um you know what? What y'all? What y'all taking that that situation there? Dustin saved the day again. He figured out everything Always. with the compass. Yeah, that's my guy. He figured Always. out everything with the compass, and you know he just know what to do, where to be. Just did just he, listen to he, Dustin. But, but but did he? Because remember the compass wasn't working. Steve was the one that found the rock. No, Steve found the rock. Dustin figured out the the, the compass, compass was off. off. But that didn't right. find Eddie though. That's what you said. Oh, with well, Eddie, yeah. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> sure, sure. I guess I just wanted to big up Dustin. I'm gonna be honest, with you. Eddie, Eddie. I feel whatever. it though. I mean, I'm not. I'm not mad at that. Dustin has. I mean, Dustin. Dustin has proved himself within the ranks of what he's doing, how he's doing it, and how he's taking care of it. So we understand. Yeah. Dustin. Dustin resourceful. Um, Steve is probably the least resourceful, but Steve is the one that's gonna make the sacrifice. <clears throat> the sacrifice play, you know, for the team. Wait, you saying Steve is the least resourceful out of the group? Yes, come on now. I mean, as far as what when the it comes hell to has it, Eddie done? Eddie, Eddie. Well, he's. Nothing. I don't. I don't count him as the core because he's been on the. They. They're helping him. I don't count him as the core. I count Steve, Robin. I don't Steve. like that. Then what the hell has Max done? Compared to who? <laughs> Compared to, to Steve. Steve. Steve though, Steve doesn't know. He's he's just a babysitter. No, and Steve, is, Steve man, is just a babysitter. I, I ain't rocking with that one. Yeah, I feel like Steve is way more resourceful right, yeah. than Max. Yeah, I ain't rocking with that one, bro. You on your own on that one? Yeah. Stay on that island. Maybe that's, that's your ledge. Maybe, maybe that's my yeah, ledge. That's your ledge. Okay. That's my ledge. But I mean, I'm not mad at that because he will sacrifice himself to help the team. I'm not. That's that's. I mean, a better situation than the other people. I'm sure. All right. Uh, <laughs> That's your ledge. I, I ain't rocking with that one. But, but um, That's wild. Right. Yeah, pretty much during that scene, they were pretty much able to find <laughs> out that there was another door close by, and then that's when they went to the lake. And you had Nancy, Robin, Eddie, and Steve get on the boat. Um, I thought that scene was funny because the person who you said is the least resourceful jumped in to go find... Right? A sacrifice, a, a sacrificial move. To correct? jump in to go find the door. Sounds um, like he's a leader to me. I mean, Dustin, yeah. Dustin led them to that. <laughs> but Dustin ain't jumping the water. Because Steve said, y'all stay here. I mean, I think Dustin is the brains and Steve is the muscle. Can we all agree on that? I like Thank that. Thank you. That's all I'm saying. Okay. okay. That's all. That's, 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 you that's said it. he's the least resourceful. Somebody that's the muscle is not least resourceful. Lie. Uh, go so, ahead and lie. But before we get into the water, we need to go to um, to Hopper. Uh, we need to go back to Russia and Hopper when he is. <laughs> Chris is like, why? Did he have to? <laughs> like, <laughs> because I mean, no. Okay, so within this situation, so um, you know, they're they're in they're about to fight. They're about to fight something. They don't know what they're about to fight, but they know they're about to fight. But it was a plot twist. They get taken into a room where they get a big feast. Um, and they're in there eating. Enzo it was at Big Russians. Mama House. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Enzo and the Russians, they just having a good old time. You know, they talking about how Hopper, he's giving up on life. He's, you know, he's afraid. He's scared. But I'm assuming Hopper has picked up on enough Russian to be able to know they talking shit, but they kicking shit about the wrong shit. And he, right. you know, pretty much says, hey, you know, y'all think we up in here to do this and that, but they pretty much just getting us fat and thick. So when we get out here, we offer to just get wiped off anyway. I fought against this. I know how it acts. I know how it moves. And we just, the entertainment, you know, as far as when it comes to, um, you know, this demon. Um, what y'all so, think they was eating on that uh, to get them thick so fast? 
because I'm trying to, I might need to get, pick up something just to get a little extra thickness if it's going to come quick. Your tapeworm ain't going to let you. Hey, I was about to say jazz. Bruh, jazz ain't got no fucking tapeworm. You keep saying that, people going to believe you. I don't. That's, that's the point. Believe us. <laughs> believe us, it's there. You know what? No, jazz Chris. doesn't have a, a tapeworm. I believe but Chris just... definitely ain't got no legs. I have legs. Uh, but yes, they are pretty much eating and Hopper pretty much put them on game. It's just like, nah, they going to try to kill us. I've yeah. fought this before. I've come across this and Enzo was upset because Enzo was like, don't be sharing this kind of information with them because we need to have hope. And with the stuff that you were saying, these guys just going to be in panic mode and they just think, shit, we about to die. Yeah. But Hopper was just like, I'm just going to be real with y'all. This ain't nothing to play with. So. Yeah, Hopper know already. It's one of them things where you, you know, they feeling like it's sweet or whatever, and they just naive. Hopper's like, nah, y'all. <clears throat> whatever. Y'all know how I feel about Hopper's storyline until we get to. But I mean, but now, I'm, now this, I'm not, I'm not letting you do it this time because at this point, it actually started to hype up. It started yeah. to actually live up to the story because we hear, even though he, even he gave up hope, but then he, he gained a new hope. And he fought Enzo, which was a new plan where he calculated to he kept some of the whiskey that he was drinking on um, inside the inside the, the feast that they had. And he took the the um, the cops lighter yeah. um, to try to use it to steer off the Demogorgon. Yeah, because, uh, you know, like I said, at this point, he knows exactly what they are about to face, how to face and then what to do um, to fend off, you know, the actual the demon. Um, that we that we have here, um, and then you know we go back, you know to Hawkins, um, and like you said, Steve. Uh, Steve has jumped into the water um, to to figure out what the gate and the kids have been captured by the police um, and taken back to the house. So in that scene before, <clears throat> excuse me, when Steve took his shirt off, did y'all peep? Nancy was ready to risk it all. Yeah, Nancy was ready. To Nancy was ready. She forgot all and about it. And Robin Nancy. caught it. Robin caught it. Robin was like, "Oh, I see you staring." And Nancy was like, "Damn, I, I want that old thing back." Because they had their conversation in that woods too. When yeah, they, they did. She was yeah. yeah so but you see Max as well. Max, she took the took the took the uh, the binoculars. Binoculars. Off Lucas, <laughs> Lucas was like, "Whoa, Whoa what you? Lucas Whoa, like, what you doing? You're staring too hard." <laughs> Lucas wanted to choke her out right then and there, but he was like, "She almost died yesterday, so I'm a chill." Man, but. Man, yeah. which which that brings up another good point. So, you know, um, Lucas and Max they were talking, um, and then he was just you know he finally was you know able to to just break you know break down to her. He was like, "I heard you, but I I didn't hear you, you know." And I'm here, you know. And it was just like a real a super you know like touched a sentimental moment. Just you know him just still expressing himself like. You know, I was looking at all the wrong things, and like he's still just taking a lot of stuff, you know, within himself. But I, like I said, as far as when it comes to it, but that was just like a tough. I think it's a tough moment. It was a cute moment because, like I said, they're younger, um, as far as when it comes to it. But he was definitely letting them know he, you know, you can see, you know, he loves her, um, as far as when it comes to it, and he just missed what they had and what that relationship was. Um, yeah. So it was that was super dope just to see that. Yeah, yeah that definitely. was opened up got very vulnerable with her so yeah. unlike some characters that don't want to open up and be vulnerable mike yeah so don't want to be like mike no, not that. do y'all think uh since this episode we pretty much established a friendship between robin and nancy robin about to be out of here because nancy can't keep no friends because soon as somebody get that friend label with nancy they are out of here see when i think about stuff like that like how impactful would it be like, I like Nan, uh, Robin, but it wouldn't hit the same as if one of the other friends died. I mean, did Fred hit? Did Patrick hit? I mean, you're going to have bodies <laughs> fall. Yeah, wait, but... wait, wait, hit what? No, hit I like... I mean, Fred, Fred, Fred hit the ground, oh. but like... <laughs> not <laughs> like... He hit the ground, but... You I'm know. like, she's not about to scream rules into Stranger Things? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> no. Which basically means you cannot have sex... If you don't have sex, you more likely to survive. In case anybody missed that. Well, Nancy had sex in season one. Her and Steve, so they might both be out of here. I mean, so. But maybe it passed over the bar. Nah. <laughs> that was suck. Barb would be the Randy. 
Yeah. But do we really still care about Bart? Honestly? Yes. Oh, okay. Just checking. only for the simple fact that they got Barb out of here and never referred to her ever again. Yeah. So to see Bob Barb pop back up, it's a really dope reference back to season one. Yeah, it's a good call. And back. I love those callbacks. So to me, I think it'd be important to bring her back. Maybe Chris one day. Care. I don't, honestly. It's been three seasons. It's just, you know. Sorry, everything, Barb. everything comes back, man. Everything goes and back I like to that. the beginning. Like yeah. every like every single thing goes back this to the beginning. This motherfucker quoting all streamlines. It's not even it's not even intentional. It was just I mean seriously, everything does <laughs> back to, you know where we begin. And um uh, like I said, we know Steve jumped, went inside the gate. Um he comes back, he lets the team know. Um, you know, it is something down there we can see and he gets pulled. Um and I at this point I thought Steve was Steve was out of here. Like that shit yeah. was that was that was the scene. That was and the Nancy, scene. Nancy jumped in so quick. Yeah, she was I going to get her. Out of you think she anybody? number two? Right. You think she would have jumped in that quick for Jonathan at this point? I think she probably would have been hesitant. Yeah, that's fine. But do y'all have anybody that y'all would have jumped in the water to go save? Yes, as Jess. quick as Nancy. Yes, oh, Jess. Chris got somebody. What about you, Jason? <laughs> 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 Jason said, "Y'all getting me in trouble." Nobody, not one. I w- I would jump. I would I would definitely jump um, to save some people. I mean, you know, I've I've been asked, you know, <laughs> on top of the off of like bridges, like if I fell off and fell into the water, would you Who's jump? Fuck ask no. Those kind of questions. Yeah, why are you that close to the edge of the bridge? I would it's ask. Just, it's just if, it's just one of those questions. Like if I was to fall off the bridge and I fell into this water, would you? jump in and save me i'm like you know i can barely swim like i can swim for me i can't swim for two am it's i like, trash <laughs> to ask is yes. the water like ice cold i don't know what that water is i'm on, that's I'm what on I'm a say- bridge i'm on a bridge no that's what i'm saying i'm just like with this scenario oh if it's <laughs> so that determines if you're gonna jump in or not like so if, it's, so, so if it's warm you gonna, you jumping oh i got you i mean not you can't I- swim the first, <laughs> yeah, what's she, what's she jumping in? A pool? Jason. Jason. <laughs> Jason I can swim for me. I can't swim for nobody else. I just love how, like, three weeks in a row, Jason been airing out jazz. It's, it's, it's not even on, it's not on purpose, wow, bro. It's right. not purpose. It's not it's on purpose. purpose. Yeah. But Chris over purpose. here talking about he gonna jump. This motherfucker ain't even got no legs, so he gonna be down there like Dory. <laughs> Or right. no, like Nemo. I want I want Jazz to get like, some new material because that leg thing is like. No, it's not. It's a, if people asking, is Chris in a wheelchair? Nah, no, that I'm not, I'm not in a wheelchair. <laughs> I want to uh, real quick. I want to know why Jazz got the house in the background and she know we can't see it. Wait, what? <laughs> it bears head in a way. You know we can't see no house. My nigga, you got a fucking background too, and so does Jason. It, it's Nobody not a house. It's not a house. Chris, is that what we doing? We like, not doing did you? This. Never mind. Let's you get right. back onto. The, like, let's get back onto the episode. Man, this so, so Steve is getting killed in episode <laughs> six. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's getting his ass ate out by these bats. He, you know what? Bats. Oh, uh, yeah. Jason, I, mean, I need to get that clip where they zoom in to where they're zooming down at Steve getting ate up. And I need to get that as a gift. <clears throat> so I can sit I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm trying to get ate like this. Like, so what's up? Come on, oh, man! I hope they watch. <laughs> I hope they watch Stranger Things because that would be very awkward. <laughs> like, imagine you send it. Like, I'm a trying to get eight out. So I'm trying to get eight to death. This she is sick. Yeah, Jazz. Is. <laughs> but Jazz, I know you. I know it felt more to come back even when you got to episode seven because Steve went the fuck off when he find you know when the team. So we open up into episode seven, um, the massacre at Hawkins Lab. We go into mm-hmm. episode seven, and then opens back. We get back to Steve getting getting eight um, by these bats, um, and when these bats are eating him, um, the team they finally fly. You know they get back in there and they come in to the upside down to defend Steve. Mm-hmm. Um, and Steve is just like that was like super um, like barbaric, and you know how he went into it, and it just it just felt like a, a fatality um, in Mortal Kombat the way he was he bit the bat he spit the blood out and he just 
pelt just kept on hammering and hammering and hammering until it, you know, busted open. I was like, man, this shit is sick. But it, it was, was hard. The visuals was were hard. like between episodes six and seven. The visuals were so dope for the simple fact of like you seeing, like in six, you see him get dragged into the upside down and just seeing how the camera just panned and then seeing him get dragged. Like it was, the visuals in this entire season have been a hundred percent. Like they've been amazing. Yeah. But Nancy yeah. came. She came to save Old Bay, Man, so she, she can get did. that new she thing back. There. She came through there. She came so. through there. And you know, this episode we didn't get the Cali crew at all. Like there was none of them, no mention of them of anything. But one thing we did get um, was the Lieutenant Colonel. <clears throat> the Lieutenant Colonel is still trying to find a location um, of L. So he has the. So one cop was killed. Um, in the car, but Wallace, he was shot when they entered the house, but they do have Wallace, and they've been torturing him for three episodes, trying to get the location, and he finally says he's going to give up um, the situation, and one thing uh, I felt that was important to bring up was, he was saying that <clears throat> um, Sam Owens is doing one or two things, either there's a boogeyman terrorizing kids, or one of his freaks has gone rogue, and, you know, it was just like a, a nice, um, what is it, you know, call to, calling something to fruition, um, just based on how we see this episode turns out. So he was, I mean, you know, um, he wasn't far off um, in what he was thinking that was going on uh, within, you know, within that situation. I didn't catch that. That's like thinking about it now and then thinking about the last, yeah. the closing scene of Seven. I'm yeah. like, oh, wow. Cause I was it's, just like eleven, just out here, just trying to go to school and not get bullied. But exactly. Then we exactly. see like, which, which freak, were, um, or a science project or whatever he referenced him as, that could he could have been uh, referencing. But um, that was a good callback. I didn't catch that. Chris, what did you think of episode seven? Episode seven to me was dope. Uh, I think. With this episode, like you said, it had a bunch of callbacks that we didn't get. One of them, well, we haven't gotten to the end of the episode yet, but uh, we see creepy guy. He's getting real personal with Elle. Um, and he's pretty much, you know, this this guy's a master manipulator when it all plays out. Like this man is, he's saying all the right things. You know, he's, he's she's vulnerable already. And it was- That sounds like what a lot of men do anyway, right? Oh, okay, y'all got quiet. Go I, ahead, Chris. I, was, I was gonna say women. Nah. Definitely men. I definitely but say that women. We, we, we're not going to do the male-female back as far and forth. As but... Says, no, no, says no, the no, person no. who started the male-female back and forth. <laughs> no, I'm just but saying, hey. like, <laughs> but you know what? You know I what, was Jazz, going off of you know what, what you were saying. I, you know what? I've been in situations where I have, I've definitely <laughs> taken advantage of a situation. Yeah. I do apologize if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> They cut, if you they out cuss there. me out right now. They cuss you out Jason right now. finally yeah, apologized. apologized. If you out there, I do apologize. I, I, you know, I understand the error of my ways. He's he's growing. To, I'm not trying to rekindle nothing. That's like the most. Know. That's like the most but, Aquarius thing to do, like apologizing on a podcast. Like what is? But if she is listening, be sure to like, subscribe, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> follow. She, she's probably not gonna like. She's not gonna subscribe. She probably dislike this shit. And make make sure. Oh, then we gotta go ahead and make sure she blocked, cause we ain't got confidence in that. Yeah, send, send that send that ad to the chat later on. We're gonna block. We can't have that negative energy. Go ahead and nip that shit in the butt ASAP. <laughs> yeah, don't 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 check out the pod at all if you're gonna be doing. That. Uh, but uh, yeah, he was a master manipulator. You know, he was saying all the right things with L, and eventually he wanted her to uh, you know extract this little chip out of his neck, which we learned later on was suppressing his powers. Um, and I, you know, we talked about callbacks and we're going to get into it, um, before, but the, uh, opening scene of the season, we saw the massacre, which was, you know, the episode title, uh, we saw the massacre and it was made to believe that L was the one who killed all these kids in the lab. And then of course, as the episode plays out, um, L is again, getting bullied, you know, by some of the other numbers, uh, the other kids are, <laughs> <laughs> she just can't catch a break. Yeah, it was number two, number, number two, number yeah, two, number two. Number two. So trash, number two was a number yeah. two was just like, you know, like I said, it, it's been so many different antagonists. We do have a main villain, but it's been a lot of different antagonists. The Angela too. Yeah. Angela, Jason. Now we got number two. Um, 
you know, just going crazy on L. And it's just like, bro, you like a, you, he's like literally almost like teenager. And like I said, yeah. she's like six yeah. or seven, which yeah. like that y'all catch like it's a like. We know it's L playing out her memories, but like she's a kid though. Like it yeah. a kid. Like it's, it's yeah. a stand in. I, when I she's up in the that, when they marry, yeah. Yeah, I definitely noticed that in the rewatch. But Chris, you um, when you were talking about this episode, it made me think of something because when we did have the opening scene of episode one, you saw the massacre, you saw all the dead kids, mm-hmm. and it pretty much made you think it was L the entire time, which kind of and then as you we got through the uh, season seeing all the bad things happen to her to where it made you think, well, I kind of see why she snapped because y'all were going ham on her for no reason. Like she's literally minding her business, but then it's just like, oh, but she's going to get her revenge. But then we come to find out Elle had nothing to do with any of that. Yeah. She was innocent. So I just, but before we get there, we need to, we need to say that piece because some people have, like I said, some people, which, I want to pause, but we do want to shout out the people who do not watch these shows, <clears throat> but they're listening just off the strength of who we are. So we're going to build up to, you know, what the actual reveal of, you know, where everything, the massacre, how the actual massacre happened. Because there's only really two stories. Uh, well, there was actually three uh, that was going on. Because we do have the kids in Hawkins. Um, the kids in Hawkins are stuck in the upside down they don't know how to get back out because they just you know they fell through the the first um tunnel uh when the first gate which is the water gate the water coined gate. by the, yeah. you know, his corny ass <laughs> that's why you love him because he well he, he make them dad jokes says oh, the dad says the yeah, dad Chris love does. <laughs> I did, you know, yeah right, jazz right. got that jailbreaker joke off last week and... <laughs> i didn't yeah, like it was so, funny but you, you definitely... laughed the first time I said yeah, you, it. No, you definitely laughed. Laugh. You definitely yeah. did. Take three, you didn't laugh because we heard right. about 18 times at that point. <laughs> right. We didn't but, record the pod so many times that you could have got the full so, effect of Jason's laugh. So we got the so we in the house. The, the kids are in the house with the police, with the parents. And d- question. What so Chris, I mean you the you the baby, but you I mean you really <laughs> didn't grow up as siblings, so right? Right. All right, so Jasper, you did. So you can relate. Where, where you at in your in your sibling ranking? You the oldest. I'm the youngest. Are you are you like Erica? <laughs> you know what that laugh means. Go so, ahead. So well, I wasn't snitching as bad as Erica, but I definitely called some shit out to my siblings, but not in front of adults. Erica yeah, was Erica, snitching. Erica, Erica dropping. Dro- Erica dropping yeah. dimes. Erica like, was I'd be like, shooting. bro, what you doing? Yeah, Erica was as like, as I mean, they didn't go to the movies. They lied to you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love Erica, though. Erica is in my top five favorite characters of this I like. I like series. when she stood up I to like Jason. Her. I like when she stood oh, up to gosh. Jason in the place and she called him out and the parents, you know, they didn't really do too yeah. much. But when and, she was in the house, I was like, man, come on. It just take me back. Uh, like I said, my brother was, my. I have, I'm the oldest. Uh, my little brother, he was like my right-hand man. So he didn't do that with my sister, though. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh my God! Any, had, so you said you didn't really. So there was never a situation where you, where you had, where you had your older siblings on the ropes, and you was like, you better do this or else. Nah, my older siblings ain't play that, especially my brother. <laughs> Shit, that motherfucker would have had me. He would beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> like nah. <laughs> He would have had. He would have had her like uh, old dude had eleven at the end of the episode. <laughs> Relax, hey relax, man, relax. That's, I had a you know what I did have a I had a, a situation like that. Me and my sister um, got into a real bad altercation. We, we were younger though, and like I was good at throwing shit. Like I used to like practice throwing things, and like I took like this disc and I threw it and it hit her right. Got an Angela situation and she would bleed. And I'm like, bro, don't tell your mama. Like, but she got to like she bleeding all in the face. I'm like, oh my god. As far as when it comes to it, but yeah, yeah okay. You know, I, okay. Okay, bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd that come from? I, I mean, it's just, you know, just like I said, dealing with siblings. And I know how, you know, I know how I work, you know, when it comes to siblings. But, um, you know, we get back into the house with the kids. Um, they in the house and um, Dustin, Lucas, and Erica, they break away from the family and they are talking about, you know, what's going on. And they say, you know, they wouldn't go inside the, you know, inside the gate without some type of plan. But uh, we see... Uh, they definitely did. They went inside the gate uh, without a plan. They had to go back to another call back to the original season where they used yeah. the lights. 
yeah. um, to let them know uh, where they are and how to get them or how they can actually assist. Um, and, you know, you can uh, elaborate on what Dustin figured out since that's your guy um, inside the house. Dustin's the man. Um, go ahead, Jess. Oh. Oh, Chris is gonna take that. I but, did too. Um, I said I said that was your man. No, I want to Let it rock. But but um yeah, I thought that scene was pretty dope because when you, they realized that the light was blinking, excuse me, Erica realized the light was blinking and it was uh then they started realizing that the guys were actually in the upside down, so they were trying to get some um light devices to where they can communicate with them. Yeah. What I loved about this scene is they used a light bright toy. Jason, do you remember those? The light brights where you put the little things in and then you create different pictures. I do, but that wasn't my, that wasn't my, I didn't have. It, it was more of a girl toy. Um, I, was an itch, I was an itch and skit type of guy. Yeah, I remember the itch oh, and skit. Yeah, I remember them. But uh, so they used the light bright to communicate with them. And it was funny because I had one of those. My parents hated that shit because it was so many small pieces and it was always on the floor. Uh, but anyway. You ain't cleaning um, up after yourself. I was a kid and yeah, I get it. it is what it is. But I thought that was cool when they were pretty much communicating with them and Dustin's like, why don't you go back through Watergate? And then mm -hmm. Nancy was pretty much letting them know like it's guarded. So they were trying to figure out what other gates that they can go through. Yeah. And by this time, I believe Dustin already knew since there were more gates that were created, you got to go find a gate where somebody was killed, which was Eddie's trailer. Mm -hmm. And so... And then also when they were in the upside down, they realized Nancy, because they went to her house to try to find a gun, because Nancy has guns. But then they also realized <laughs> they're like four years in the past, four or five years in the past. So Nancy's yeah. didn't three. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, so Nancy's guns weren't there. Which I can't wait till we get an explanation for that. Yeah, I'm I was gonna curious. say that was I'm a, curious. That was a that was a that was a I feel like you know the wheel. I feel like that's where the wheel situation is going to come into right. come in, come into play. Like right. that that whole because you said that my this is the last entry before wheel right got stuck exactly inside right the upside down like I, you know. I need some explanation for that. But I, I feel like it's going to be something <laughs> with wheel man it in the second. I feel it like, yeah. Because I because like I said with it with the way this episode ended like I said I don't know how you can top it so. I mean, like I said, we we, we hey. keep jumping, we keep jumping. You know? Yeah, like I said, look who we, we talking about. Like I said, yeah, we keep, like I said, we keep like we keep jumping. Like I said, episode four, that was crazy. And said we got this one, this is crazy. But like I said, we still we still building, we still building up to, um, you know what we are. But like I said, we in the they are in the upside down. Um, yeah. They playing with the light bright, um, and then we get this dope ass montage of the kids on the bikes. But before that, we get badass Erica. Talking about her misdemeanor, where she puts a puts a hole, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like what Chris, like kind of what Jada said, man. she was gonna do the do the Chris last week in his wheelchair when they see each other next time. Talking that, trash. That's the only reason I brought that back up. Yeah. Oh, just for that. <laughs> but nah, like Jason, that <laughs> shot was so dope because it's like you see the guys that are in the upside down riding mm -hmm. the bikes, heading to Eddie's trailer, and then you see. Dustin, Erica, Max, and Lucas also mm. riding the bikes, heading to Eddie's trailer. So it's just, and it also pretty much connects to the graphics or the art that we saw when the season released. Because mm -hmm. you basically saw four different stories happening and everybody going in one direction. And so I just thought, I, I was just like, oh, this is fire. And then when they get to Eddie's trailer. <laughs> Before we get there, let's go ahead and conclude Hopper's story. Because the rest of the the rest of it, is, <laughs> Jesse, I, I guess. I know, I know. We don't love. We'll leave Hopper. it to Jason. We'll... We, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and end this because this is what I was waiting for, baby. We finally get the Joyce and Hopper reunite. They finally reunite. Man. Nobody got hit. Nobody got. Did they even kiss? Hand. Did they even like, kiss? They just, they just. Uh, hugged. It was a warm embrace. Shout out to Chris. But hold on, who's, but who's Chris, an album. you pretty much gotta. I mean, excuse me, Jason. You pretty much gotta go through that battle. You're right. You're right. We do got to go back into like, that. So, um, <clears throat> so we get to we go back to the Russian prison. Um, Murray and Joyce have um, put together a plan where Murray is going to pretend he's Yuri, um, mm -hmm. and they're going to sneak into it that way, and they're going to he's going to basically turn them over um, to the the Russian prison because you know they they put the plan together with Enzo. Um, so they go into the prison, they walk them through, and they let them come and see this game. 
Um, that's basically a game where they have the prisoners. Um, <clears throat> they have the prisoners. They give them a buzzer. Once the buzzer rings, they get to go into a, a, a warehouse, get their weapons, and they get to try to fight against this actual monster. Which they give them weapons that they that can't be that they, they can't beat um, the Demogorgon with, um, pretty much. But again, Hopper has a plan, and the police are kind of upset at what Hopper um, is doing. It was like, man, it doesn't matter what he's about to do. We're not going to shoot him because he's going to die anyway. With they not knowing, you know. Um, Hopper has, uh, like I said, he has whiskey that he's poured on a uh, on a stick with a, a piece of cloth and he's burnt it, which the Demogorgon, the only thing that their weakness is, is fire. Mm -hmm. So Enzo and Hopper are uh, well enough to not die, um, but the Demogorgon goes fucking off. This episode was like... Like this, this episode was up there. Cause like I said, the gore was crazy, and like I, you know, I look at TV with the the captions. <clears throat> so it was like, did the monster choose wetly? And I'm like, bro, this is like, a, like <laughs> yeah, a... <laughs> wetly. That was the word. Wetly. Interesting. You made that shit up. <laughs> they didn't say that. Go back to the episode. It says monsters chewing wetly, and I'm like, you can hear, but you can hear it because you can see him. Like he's go, eating the heads off the people. He's slamming them up against the wall. He's picking them back up yeah. and throwing them. I'm like, bro. He's going fucking crazy. Um, you you know, this is when um, Murray he, he and go ahead and he initiates his plan. He helps uh, try to get Hopper free. Uh, he takes over the rush. He puts his karate goes back into action. <clears throat> uh, he beats up the Russian guards. He opens up the the prison, and we you know we finally get that the Hopper Joyce, um, and that is the conclusion of the Russian story. Did y'all y'all didn't like that? It was like cute. Story? I, I'm not gonna lie, it I, was it cute. Was, I, from that from that point on to the rest of the the, the episode was well well wrote, wrote it was written yeah. well. Like I, yeah. I loved it. I loved it. I, honestly I feel like they just like the Hopper story dragged on but they needed that story yeah. to yeah. It was just like I, you could have gotten there way quicker but you needed more to fill so Yeah. I, I mean cool. when you saw Joyce's face and she just went up to Hopper, which just gave him a hug. Yeah. I'm like, Hopper, you better than me. I would have stripped his clothes off right there. Like, <laughs> In the middle of the Okay. Rightfully so. And I would have expected it. You know, it was kind of slick, though. The camera kind of... The camera went up to his head, you know. She's yeah, she was like him, that. So it's like, yeah. but in that, like I said, in that situation, Hopper hasn't smiled. He has, he did laugh the night before. Hopper hasn't, Hopper's been getting his ass beat. So I, I needed him to have some type of, he lost hope. Some type of closure. Because he was, he like I said, he gave up hope. He was yeah. like, no, nah, it's, it's over with. But he started thinking like, I'm, I feel like I still got to fight. Yeah. Um, you know, fight for L as far yeah. as when it comes to it. Because, you know, that's, you know, I feel like they, I had a situation like you know i don't know y'all can't really relate to it like like not right now but he was just talking about how he feel like kids are designed to have an issue with their father as they begin to get older even if it's not a um your your actual lineage just father figure they just they're meant to do that which like so you kind of see it um uh, when it's dealing with kids but it's just all about well for me it's all about just really communicating and physically you know, being present as far as when it comes to my kids. So y'all know, y'all know, I go hard best mm -hmm. I can um, in those situations. So um, not to you know get too off of here, uh, but uh, yeah. So we, you know, we back in. Um, y'all going to Hawkins? Y'all trying to go to L in the prison? I feel like Hawkins. We gotta save, yeah, save L for so last. We, I so think. we go back to you know we'll go back to Hawkins. Um, we back in Hawkins. Um, the kids have met linked up at the at Eddie's trailer, um, and they see um, the crack in the uh, ceiling. They the, yeah, they see the crack in the ceiling. They like, man, yeah. it looks kind of weird. And they they bust it open um, with some type of stick, and then they you know they drop a cloth, uh, drop a cloth down inside of the room. Physics. Uh, Eddie nasty ass. Uh, he uses his mattress nasty mattress. He he didn't know where the stains came from, which is. Which is wild, bro. Go get a that's, sock. That's like, that's on brand. And then why people do they use a sock? Like, like we're, we're, we shouldn't. That's on brand. He, he's a thirty-year-old high school kid. That's on brand. So, thanks, bro. Right. What? So, yeah. Um, they begin to drop. They begin to get in. Um, you know, Robin was the first. Uh, she went through easy peasy. Um, you know, we got Eddie. Uh, which Eddie? Uh, before we get too far ahead. <clears throat> Uh, Eddie keeps referring to himself. Like I said, first episode, 
he said he was like it's okay you don't have to to fight it's okay to run um he's you know i feel like his characterization is about to have a, a new development because like i said he's tired of i feel like he's tired of running he keeps running from everything but in his situation i feel like he would have had to run which i have done anything differently if y'all were eddie from episode one to now just just logically speaking not even speaking in here which i have done anything differently possibly i mean i guess with the knowledge that i have now because i watch a lot of crime shows and with everything that happened to chrissy your dna was not on her Granted, it it don't even matter because they would she was in your house, and they would have pretty much um, arrested him anyway for her murder. So I understand him doing the panic run of like I can't even explain to anybody what happened to her, so I gotta leave. But then it's just like okay, how do I come to a solution that can clear my name to prove that I didn't kill her? But I Eddie his situation is is really tough because you see something like that you're not believing it jason saw that shit happen to patrick and he's blaming Still it on blame eddie, eddie yeah which is eddie was in the water with you but you saying oh no the devil is working with eddie that's why <laughs> that had to happen it's just oh, like wait a minute jason like, like joe Osteen, bitch man. ass sounds like <laughs> <laughs> but he was <laughs> And then too with Eddie, like he's going against Jason's word pretty much. Jason is like, you know, Eddie's like the outcast. And Jason is like the basketball, right. you know. So I don't liked, really know what else. The liked guy. Yeah, you know, Jason yeah. Is the super likable guy. Yeah. So for these people to be nerds, they show is dumb as hell. <laughs> like, like all of them are, are actually dumb. If you ever just like the the kids, like our core kids, like they're nerds, but I guess they, you know, I guess that's what makes they just outcasts, really. But like they just. They don't do I think they like the adventure. This is it. like, That's pretty much it, it. Because if you had that whole gate in the water, the cops are right over there. Yeah. So let me show y'all what I see over here. But they just like, no, nah, let's not nah, let's police do it. know nothing. Let's just do it ourselves. Yeah. So, but then they also know how to handle it. And then I guess you think about <clears> it, if they were to involve the parents and the police that could put them in danger. And then you have the folks that shot up um Will's house that could come through. Yeah. So I I only get it three percent. Man, it's which... kinda it's kind of it's it's a it's a messed up situation because they def they had the they had to they had the recipe, as Chris like to say, they had the recipe on how to possibly stay alive. They didn't give it to Patrick though. Um so R. I. P. Patrick, you know. Yeah. They were so at that point it wasn't even like it wouldn't even have mattered with Patrick because they was just focused on getting Eddie. So Jason went to listen at that point. Yeah. So um, so we got Eddie. He comes through second, um, and of course again Steve sacrificing his fucking body. Um, he was gonna let Nancy go ahead and you know go out, <clears throat> which she gets caught, back in the against her, uh, back in the against her, and we you know we jump into. Uh, a montage in the, in this scenario, but like this scene, like I said, me, we, you know, we talked about it today, man. This scene was super. I don't know, like I said, this I, I'm confident in making this like a top three moment in TV television I've seen. I'm confident in that. I can't like all time. All time. I can't think of a, a moment that made me <laughs> like. I can't think of a moment. Can you? Yeah, but I mean, you put me on the spot right now, but I definitely wouldn't do top three top of top all three, time. Top, not of the all... name. I'm talking about not the name. I'm talking about what we leading up to this entire situation. Not the not Nancy being called. No, that's not. Shit. Are you talking, talking about, about just from this show? This the from Nancy getting caught to how it ends. That entire that's an entire moment. Wait, okay. So I want to get clarification right quick. Yeah. Okay. So you saying that moment from Nancy getting caught until what's going to happen is top three. Of all TV Mom, shows, the top three moments in television history. Yes, you don't lost not, your mind. I pro, you're not going. You're not going to be able to. Def, you're not going to be able to put a moment that's going to top that. I can put three from Game of Thrones Bruh, alone, and I, 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 yeah, yeah, that's yeah, just so. Yeah. I could give you three yeah, from Game of Thrones by itself. I watched, I watched it, and it did nothing. Look. Nothing. Nothing hit like. The that's recency bias. Don't that worry thing. about it. You got that's Sopranos. It. You got The Wire. You got Sopranos. yeah. No, I, I watched The Wire. Did you watch The Wire? 
Yeah. yeah. I gotta, That's why I, I said gotta, it. I got to question you, bro. You, you you said John Wick last week. You ain't seen that shit. <laughs> <laughs> That was, that was a he just, joke. See, he just be saying, nah, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's a joke. joke. I don't know what's a joke and what ain't. We you know, as far as when they come the to it. But no, but, but, but. I would but. say the scene from Thrones when uh, Cersei blew all the motherfuckers up with that damn... Uh, the dragon? No, I said Cersei. Cersei didn't have no dragons. See? Oh, that just okay, tells you, me you, right you, then you, and you, there. I forgot. I mean, that was a dope... I mean, no, that was a dope scene, and I love that, how they anticipate, but this... I feel the like Battle of the Bastards scene. is up there. Oh, God, like, yes. The Battle I, yeah. of the Bastards was that fire. Got, that, the Battle of the Bastards got too hype for me, but you know, let's not get too crawled off into that, so we're going to go I, back to just, this. Yeah, we're going to okay. go back into this, so this right here is a top moment for me in television. I'm glad he put for me. The st- I, I said for me the first time. <laughs> I think we just got hyped up and missed the Y'all did. Because he was like, sounding y'all ridiculous. Here, y'all over here dying. Why? You bro, top three it. all time? He's yes. wild. Bro. Wow. Yes, bro. Yes. So Nancy gets caught in the upside down, um, and like I said, this this scene here mirrored another Wes Craven, um, New Night. No, one of the one of the the nightmare on Elm Street. I can't. I don't know which one it was. Jazz, do you know? No, I sh- no. Nah, I'm, ju- I'm just. I just had to ask you because you know. But, but I'm curious about which scene. Are you just talking about the scene where? I'm, I'm, gonna go to, I'm going into it now. Okay. Uh, when Nancy, Nancy. Is she attempting was in the pool? to yeah yeah you know, Nancy attempts to get through um, the hole, but Nancy gets caught by Beckham. So now she's in a day. She's in she's under the curse, and her body is just falling endless endlessly, and it just keeps on falling. So there was a, a there was a nightmare scene um, where the lady was like on a high dive. She was like a swimmer, and she was diving into the pool, and she just kept on falling um, in different scenes. And it was just it just it was super similar um within that then of course she falls in and we get we get our barb scene you didn't like that barb is back no i i, I love this episode like this, i thought this episode barb was dead in the motherfucker though yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey barb look, barb look like she stink man she been down there for a long ass time man. three seasons but back yeah man. but it's but like this is when when beckner was beckner was kicking some shit bruh like he was, he was giving her bars. He was like, "When I kill people, I remember them. Damn. I know." And I was like, "Bro, wait! Why are you talking to her like this?" <laughs> hey, and man. then you see, you know, like I said, Nancy's in the pool. Um, I don't know if there was water or if there was blood that was rushing through the pool as she was down in the bottom of it. But there was just, it was, like I said, the, the, the entire scene, just, yeah. the, the entire scene being set, which is basically it's it's jazz background. Like that that's that's what the entire mm-hmm. thing was. But the house was fragmented, like it was just broken up in different pieces. Mm-hmm. And Nancy's, you know, she's walking through and she's going through and back in the begins to tell her. Um, his backstory, backstory through a montage, which we're gonna yeah. jump over um, to eleven back at the massacre house at the at the observatory. And um, you want you guys want to pick up uh, what's going on in this? Yeah. I'm gonna give it to Chris. Yeah, that was the best part of the episode because basically we had like uh, he's talking to Nancy with the visuals that we see, but L is like seeing everything and the whole the twist is coming together at this point. Like we realize he's Victor Creel's son. And he has powers, and like you see his full plan coming together. That was the best part of the episode for me. Just, just that whole reveal and like how the story was told. And of course, Victor told his side of the story, but now we're seeing the son's side of the story. And it was interesting too because um, me and Jazz had a conversation about this. Like, how do we not suspect this guy? You know, like all this time he was suspect. You know, he was creepy, but we didn't expect to see him revealed to be Victor Krill's son. And you know behind everything that was going on. And of course it was revealed that he was behind the massacre um, at the, you know, at the facility and- But but before that, he was revealed to be number one. That's true too. Number one was also referenced. uh, He was referenced at episode five because uh, Elle was playing that little game when she was testing her powers. And he was like, you know, no one talks about episode one and, you know, basically saying Brenner is a liar. So that was the beginning of the manipulation at that point too, so. Yeah, so the entire time he was telling Elle about number one and how mm-hmm. number one was different and mm-hmm. number one was the one who who which I'm gonna ask you guys. <clears throat> do you guys have a moment that makes you sad but also makes you angry? 
because that's what that's what motivated number one to do everything that he did um and like i said this like i said we like we fit to get into it because at this point like i said this would then this is why i say this was like a really dope moment like i said i'm not not the shit on thrones because like i said that's one of my favorite scenes as well jazz like that 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 scene of when she set that up you know she blew up the people inside the church you know her son gets killed in the same he kills himself uh, within that same exact time, it's like a lot. It's, it's a lot that goes on. Jesse, like, don't miss it. Like, like I'm, not, I'm not because it was like I, I watched. Was, I was like, no, I watched. I watched that episode over, and I was like, bro, I was, I was, I was shocked. But the way I felt here was a bigger shock to me. Um, because it, it was just like, okay, we had the, we had the reveal, but the reveal wasn't enough. It's like the reveal was one thing, but it kept on going and it kept on escalating. Um, within you know within the episode, like I said, I feel I like I said I. It, I caught one. Like we knew he was, we knew he was somebody. Like as far as when they come, but I felt like when he first said, you know, I know who number one is, and he put them like, oh, you number one niggas. Like stop, like <laughs> stop, stop being you like that slick. Yeah. Um, as far as when it comes to it, so like um, he motivated eleven, which it was um, a nice, a benchmark, I guess you would say, when they was playing the the circle game where they put mm-hmm. the, the numbers, um, which it was two was dominating the entire the entire the group um the brothers and sisters he you know he was in there and he was able to um you know basically control like the main thing was you play in a circle um you have to be able to push the person outside of the circle which brought me back to when i played football chris have you ever played have you ever played football no i haven't but i know what you're talking about gotcha yeah because we played like a oklahoma we did like oklahoma drills you get two yeah. people you get two bags, you put them on the side, you lay down in your bag, the coach say go. I hated that fucking game. I had to but you had to do it just to show you on the bitch. Like so I you know, I was able to complete it, but it wasn't wasn't one of my favorites. So you have it here, um, but then it, it kinda plays out at the end where they play in which it was a super dope scene. One is on one side of the room, eleven is on the other side of the room and you have the rainbow breaking even to where they are and it was just like uh like everything about this fucking episode was amazing leading up to this point where we finally get one revealing what his actual plan was from the beginning and go back to what chris said i don't i don't know if that was manipulation bro that was textbook like that was like a different type of calculated sickness in that situation yeah yeah jason i'm glad you came back to uh that game because i was definitely gonna ask you guys a question and it's funny because two was tossing them kids around like a rag doll yeah it wasn't no and i'm like y'all was just he was just fucking all of them up and i'm just and y'all was following him y'all was bullying l with him after he just threw your ass around in the room but my question for y'all is would y'all let babe Throw y'all around like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the wrestle. Hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that bitch boy body slamming like a motherfucker. What's up? Here he go, Jason. Throw me around to where it's a crack in the wall. <laughs> Jason tried to break the bed like Drewski did. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I get it. Hey, man. We would have been in that thing tossing. But you, you had some mess on that, Jazz? Nah, it was just, um, I, I'm glad two got out of here. Two was, Man, and then yes. he snitched on himself after they assaulted uh, Eleven. Oh yeah. And uh, the doctor was like, she had a concussion. Oh, you know she she falls a lot. Get him. Come on. Yeah, get, put that yeah. collar on the neck. Put we about to fuck you up, like, cause you too arrogant, and I know it was you. And then, oh, you making it seem like L snitched. And I'm like, why do y'all always feel like L snitched on you when you tell on yourself? I, I didn't even catch that. I didn't even catch that. Just like Angela did. Like you, yeah, that's yeah, I'm, same I'm, thing. You snitched I'm on just, yourself. You snitched on yourself. I'm just like, damn, L can't catch a break. But man, that was. But like I said, we let's let's go into the the game of the manipulation that you know this, this that one was playing. Um, so you know, after this scene, L gets a concussion. Um, then she's released back into um, the rainbow room. Um, one. So tells her, I got something more challenging for you to do. Uh, let's go over here. Make sure you don't react to the emotions. Um, he, you know, 
breaks down to it that Brenner is trying to kill you and that's why they keep coming in here trying to, you know, do things. But uh, it, you know, really is him. He, he's been setting forth everything um, going into it, but he's been, he's been doing it from the background. Mm-hmm. Um, when it, you know, when it comes out, um, like Chris already brought up, you know, brought it to the, brought up the situation because he kind of told her, because, you know, he, you know, L, like you said, Jazz, you said it. L is just a sweet person. L is going to take, you know, she's going to go to whomever um, is drawing to her, who, who can, who's showing her some type of affection. So, you know, she didn't want to leave him. So she was like, well, you know, there is one way I can leave. And he pulls out um, the, the power suppressor. And then, mm-hmm. you know, once she does that, you know, he kind of shows her what he can do. Um, and we, you know, I was, you know, I was glad we got to see two get out of here the way he got the way he got out of here he, yeah. he fucked two up like he he had he had to do him like that but i was glad he, he did, did like that like that was jazz, like jazz that. wished that, jazz <laughs> wished that was angela that that happened nah, to but now like for real i would have left him i would have left one there if one would have been like i'm not able to leave with you because i got this in my neck i'd have been like thank you for all of your help <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> bye bye like and if but he you know L me, though if he was to stop me like but wait can i go with you you're not gonna fit in this little tunnel but i'll try to see if i can get some backup to come get you i i wouldn't even thought like oh let me try to remove that i'd have been like thank you for your help okay bye and just <laughs> <laughs> went through that tunnel like, look at her cro- yeah. look at her crawl <laughs> 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 but not nah, like yeah and he, he just, knew what type of person l was so he he already had her do you think if L was black that he would have tried to help her? If L was black, she wouldn't have been there in the first place. She would have been left. She was like, sorry. <laughs> Just like Jan said, bye. Sorry. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you Stay for up. your motivation. Stay up. <laughs> but yeah, then um, like I said, we you know, we go through it. He he reveals that he he reveals at eleven that he's number one. He tells her not to leave a room while he goes and kills everyone um within the building but he leaves brenner like he he had that that's that man he he's really sick in the head he always does that he kills everybody and he leaves somebody to mm-hmm. take the fall for everything he did the thing he did it to his dad um uh, he's doing it to brenner he didn't think kill about he that. just knocked him which out which is also him. like his dad so um yeah you know to you know to a certain extent so then you know 11 you know he's talking to 11 and he's kind of revealing his plan um i don't know why you know villains do that i'd much rather them just go ahead and kill everybody but he's revealing this plan um as far as what he's done and he tells why he killed his mom uh, which you know they say mama knows best um uh, but do y'all think do y'all have y'all ever had a situation where y'all mom kind of knew saw you for what you were or what you were doing in a situation you were wrongdoing um, now this, no, you were hopefully you wasn't killing animals in y'all backyard. And y'all. No, we, we, we not white. We don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Say that for the other yeah. side. Yeah, no. <laughs> Mike, that Mike, that Michael Myers type. Uh, yeah. Act- activity, no Michael yeah. Myers activity on this podcast. We, sorry, we don't guys. harm animals or nobody. But, but, but it was that. just like a. I don't know. It was it was a it, it was a fucked up thing because he said he his his ability was to to see a person's trauma, so he yeah. could see what you what you actually did and you know he said he he was upset that they were trying to fix him in mm-hmm. um, that scenario which he took it out on his mom after he, he had enough and he said she, he she could see through him and she could see he was the one that was causing these issues. It wasn't a, a demon. Um, or an omen on that house. He is the goddamn omen, um, you know, within that, that situation. So did y'all have a, a situation where y'all mom kind of called y'all out on something that y'all didn't think she knew? Of course, that's what moms do. <laughs> Plenty of times. But, I mean, like she said, I, I wasn't mean, killing no kids. Or killing you no... Like, you mean, like, called us... Actually, can you elaborate on your question before I even answer? Okay, so... Um, so within this, <laughs> so within this situation, Jazz got a story. No, so, nah, so, no, so, so within this situation, he was, you know, he was the one that was causing hell in their home. He was killing the animals. He was, um, moving the Basi- spiders around. He was showing them all these different demons that they had within them. Basically, has our mother ever called us out when we were trying to be uh, mischievous? Yeah, and it's just in a situation. Yeah. So no. I know my mama be. 
My mom be on the boy. Yeah, she be on she, top she, of that. My mom used to be in my. She used to be in my backpack at night when I'm asleep. Like I ain't see her. Like going I, through stuff in my phone I, at night. I, I going through your I, phone. I, I wasn't I was into no kid. shit. Damn. I wasn't either, but she she definitely knew my shit. I, don't know. I wasn't <laughs> telling her. <laughs> Your password is probably like one 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 or something. I don't think simple. I had. A, I didn't get a smartphone until I was in college, bro. So no, nah, it was oh. a phone. They didn't, didn't have a password. He's not young, Chris. I forgot y'all old. My bad. I don't know why you felt the need to say y'all. <laughs> but so so uh, so um, so one, he reveals his plan to L, and he basically tells her, you know, you can really be free um, if you run with me, and she tells him no. Um, and then they begin to, they do the circle game again. Um, and you know, she gets the best of him at first, but then he, he, he got her in point blank range. Cause I mean, of course he's been doing it for a longer time. He's had a, a, long, a, a, a much better grip on it, but you know, little did he know is, you know, he's been training her to be just as strong, which it comes back to the point of he's been scared of her and he knew she was going to be. As strong, if not stronger, um, than what he did. But how, what y'all think about that scene? I thought that scene was dope. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I'm curious how long, and we'll probably get this in part two. How long he's had the device in his neck? Because maybe at a certain age, when he started going to that um, facility, the doctor realized like his his power is too strong. Too much. Yeah, can't be controlled. So it could have been a situation to where he hasn't been able to use his powers in years. So yeah. they probably scooped him up right after everything with Victor Creel and then Yeah, I know. definitely think that's still, yeah. uh, what happened. They did. Um, which it kinda went back to the question I was asking, how did these kids come about? Um, so, you know, hopefully we get a a, a deeper yeah. Um, yeah. than that. But he basically was saying, you know, instead of him, you know, they're trying to control not only did he try to control it, Dr. Brenner, but he also tried to create more. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if there was, I don't know how, how they chose the babies that they were going to input, you know, this, this whatever this power, telekinesis type thing um, you, inside the kids. Do you think one, they could have gotten DNA from one and they put it, pretty much put it in the other kids to where- Oh, uh, like clone them original? almost? Yeah, I believe- well, I Not believe necessarily they clone because L had a mother <clears throat> She was just snatched up from her mom, but I believe they took the blood from. Yeah, him. I think they probably could have yeah. taken his uh, DNA and tried to experiment and, and put it in other kids, which is why they possibly could have kept him around for so long. Was like, all right, you need to go get and get your blood again. Yeah, because it was that scene when they was beating them. Remember, he was in the room and they was beating them or something. I think they I wonder his ass because <laughs> just because that was shocking him. Yeah, I think they, no, not just because, because they probably found out he's the one who let the other kids out to go fuck up L mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to where he mm -hmm. was doing mis mis um, mis mis fucked up shit behind the, the scenes. Yeah, so it's like punishment. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. He's the one that he, like yeah. everything he was saying was the stuff that he put forth. Exactly. Um, to, to set forth, uh, to make happen. Uh, when it came to it. So, yeah, he was definitely the one that was behind everything. Like I said, master ma manipulator, I don't, that may not for be sure. weird enough for him because this man it's was beyond that. It was, so, it was textbook. When it comes to him, why do you think he was like fucking up people? And we'll probably get this explained in part two, like the way that he killed people. And we pretty much see that the first time he was started killing people was his mother and his sister. Breaking the bones, fucking up the jaw. It was just a it was just so graphic. And then when you saw L walking through the rooms and seeing all the kids, kids laying on the ground, arms all bent, it was just extremely graphic to where he didn't just do a regular non graphic type of death. Like it was just on level ten. Yeah. So I'm curious if they're going to explain that. I, I need some origin on that because yeah. you need more backstory. I mean, I mean, they, I mean, they technically they gave it. Um, Nancy got that part where he was killing the animals because he. That's what I was gonna say. It was the animals he first. With. He started yeah. with the animals. He was, he was doing it with them, and he said he could, you know. Um, but that was his his way of ridding a world of what he felt was, you know, too too much of a dark past or dark history that was just messed up. He didn't he. 
you know, we, you know, we love Marvel, so we just go back to he was doing his his Thanos um, thing. He was ridding the world of what he felt was sick or bad people, um, you know. But he but he definitely went a a super sadistic way about it because, like I said, he's he's breaking like he's breaking you down, twisting your head all the way. Yeah, I think that's just who he is. He just want to kill you in the most brutal way possible. He ain't Imagine no for Thanos it. not dusting people. But breaking their fucking bones everywhere. Like, can you imagine that? No. Mad seeing, bodies to clean up. You seeing Bucky, Steve go up in the air, bones breaking. You see Wanda going up in the air, bones breaking. You just like, oh shit. And then the no, blood splatting in your face. Wanda, would, Wanda wouldn't have been in the air. At that time? Wanda wouldn't have been in the air. She, she, she had not locked her, her trauma to be full strength yet. Yeah, she, yeah, she, she wasn't that strong when Thanos did the snap. She was too busy crying over Vision, <laughs> over her vibrator. So <laughs> <laughs> Wanda would have been in the, the air. The road the ro- the ro- is up right now, so I don't know. I mean, you know, Look, you know that's, that's listen. They're gonna come, they, 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 they dropping a Vision version. <laughs> Wanda was damn bad falling in love with a, a, a vibrator <laughs> robot. Tenu. Yeah, she, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's yeah, get. Man. But yeah, man. He, um, <laughs> so, but this scene here, um, I guess another another reason is like I kind of have a bias to it because it really brought me back to. Um, I know Jazz, you kind of know about it. But I know Chris does, but like it was um, like Dragon Ball Z. Um, it really made me think about when Cell and Gohan was fighting, um, and Cell was the the most the more trained oh, yeah. fighter. Um, at that time, but it was just like a, a battle of, you know, like the will of the actual person to to overpower them. Cause like I said, Will was, like I said, not Will, but L. Uh, he had L Dale to rights. He had L. He was with to twist her ass up just like everybody else mm-hmm. uh, within that city. I don't know if that's if that was his original plan. Um, and it may have just been because she said no and she began to try to fight him. Um, but like he, he had a dare to rights and kind of like Billy, um, in season three, when L was able to tap and touch him and go into him and, you know, show him, uh, like you said, he gave him the, gave him the Holy ghost. Um, as you like to say, he, she went back to where it showed L being born with her mom. Um, and that was, you know, that's a super sentimental thing for her. And she was able to tap into that, that extra, extra energy she needed to go ahead and to shut that shit down that that one uh, was talking about. And then she just got him out of here. Then you see that crack reference. Yeah, Jazz mentioned, mentioned the crack. Episode. Yeah, well, you said it the first time when they was at Eddie's trail in the Upside Down. I was going to mention yeah. Jazz brought that up. So. Yeah, man, that was a, a super dope. And then, like I said, that's, I mean, so, you know, we know one who mastermind everything, but one is revealed to be Vecna as well. Um, it's like three yeah. twists, three twists it's in like, that last, yeah. Within that, within that last scene, it was just wild, man. She she's pushing, so that kind of make us ask the question: like, did L create the upside down? Yeah, I I thought about that, but then it was like when she pushed him into, I guess, the upside down. It was like it was already there, so I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's more to it that we got to learn about the upside down. Which, like Jazz said, I'm hoping we get more of that in part two, but I I, I wouldn't say she created it. Cause then it's like, where did the mind flare come from, and like, you know, all of that too. So, I definitely yeah. need some more explanation. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's some, there's some stuff missing, the man. I loved it. Like this episode was, um, I don't know. It was, it was, it was well written um, from beginning to end. Like I said, we only had two story, well, well, two two storylines intertwined um, with between Hawkins, um, Hawkins and Elle, but then of course Vecna being a role, um, being a dual person being one um in the memories of l but also being beckoning terrorizing mm. the people that they and you know he's he it's been just going on um what about 30 30 40 years like he's been yeah, like they said something like that <clears throat> yeah. yeah something like that it was just mm-hmm. it was well done man like the whole everything coming together at the end i was yeah my favorite episode and part two drops next week so can't wait yeah. Can't wait. Excited for that one. There's a lot of questions because what's Hopper gonna do now? I mean, I guess he's gonna reunite with L. That's his whole Jazz does not care about <laughs> get that forty K back. If they get that money back. But um yeah, did y'all have any other notes uh from these last three episodes? 
Um, no, not that I'm going through here. I don't see anything else. Um, he looking. Yeah, I am. I am. <laughs> he got. He probably got so much stuff going on right now. <laughs> uh, no. So that was. I mean, that was pretty much. Like I said, that was the the biggest the biggest thing. Um, uh, within that, like you know, this this guy's been blooming and over this, um, the entire time, and he you know he's been running shit for quite some time. Um, over time, just manipulating different situations and plans to get get back to where he needed to be and i you know i guess he's seen something in 11 um that was going to get him so it's it's interesting to see um uh, where they're going and i know last week <clears throat> we did um who was the who was going to be you know your favorite person you know your least liked person and who you thought was going to die um do you guys feel any differently this week after going through the finale or is yours stay the same no, I think it's still the same. Same. Yeah. I agree. I agree um, with Mike. Um, but I feel like <laughs> Steve. Uh, I, I want to put Steve as 1B um, in my to people to die. Who picked Steve last week? Nobody. Actually, I did. I did pick Steve last week. Did you change to Steve? I changed. I said uh, Nancy, said then Nancy. I changed to Steve. Got you. During the episode. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like because so yeah, Steve, right. Steve tip like I said, Steve is typically so and this is my reason with Steve is Steve typically like I said, he is the babysitter. So he's he pretty much be out the way because he be with the kids, helping them facilitate, you know, do things that they're unable to do. Yeah. Uh, but this time he chose to leave the kids and go with the adult kids to um to run into the, the line of fire. Um, and like I said, when it comes to, to, I feel like with Nancy, he'll, you know, he'll sacrifice his last, uh, when it comes to Nancy, uh, within that situation, I feel like that's going to, you know, lead him he's, to his untimely demise. He still love him. Yeah. Of course. They got to get that old thing back. This is true. This and is Jonathan true. Jonathan just going to be out there. Jonathan need that. He, he can die at this point. <laughs> Cause he, he's useless at this point. He just get high and, yeah. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> okay. I, know, I mean, uh, but yeah, that's the conclusion. Um, that's the conclusion um, of chapter seven. Uh, we leading into um, the next, uh, the next chapter, next volume. Um, they say it's coming next week, but um, as far as when it comes to chapters five through seven, was it good though? It was absolutely. I agree. Very good. Especially episode seven wrapped everything up perfectly, even though it's not the end of the season. But I think where they ended it, it was good. So definitely good. Yeah, it's a lot. I feel like it's a, it's a lot of unanswered things. And like I said, these next couple of episodes are supposed to, you know, supposedly like two hours a piece. So it's going to be like too many movies. Um, they're about to get. Um, like I said, have you guys checked out the trailers? Nope. No. I didn't look at that. I linked the trailer. I didn't watch it, and I, I, I don't want to. Link, but you linked it, though. You, could, you didn't have to link it. I mean, it's Stranger Things. Hard head, bro. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, here, man. He just, nah, he I didn't it, watch it. I didn't watch it. I wouldn't be surprised. Only only trailer I saw was the one at the end of the episodes that played, but I think the one that I linked was a different one. So I wouldn't be surprised with this one. The man going to be a daredevil, boy. I tell you what. Um, Chris gonna forget what it's about anyway. This nigga like Dory. <laughs> so it don't even matter. Exactly. Two seconds later. What was it about? <laughs> don't worry about it, Chris. Don't worry about it. Um so did you guys have ledges uh for this for this section? Um a ledge. Um it can't be Hopper anymore, Chris. So you don't pick that that's Honestly that's the only it's either that or Jonathan at this point. I mean, it's not re- these are the ledges are things that people would argue with you about, sir. You 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 picking things that that nobody would would argue, debate, say, or bring up a point about at all. I would say my ledge is if Nancy and Steve hook up before he get up out of here, it's not considered cheating because Jonathan's gonna ghost her anyway. So technically, Jonathan broke up with Nancy, so she's single. She just don't know it yet. That is so, the most toxic thing I've heard. <laughs> What? They haven't broken up, Jazz. They're they're still together. Chris. No. Nah, they. No. Jonathan is moving like he's single. He's Jonathan already... is. He's depressed. Is he though? He better be all that weed smoking. That better be COVID for something. You don't have what is, to what be is, depressed. What is moving? Weed. No, he's just stupid. 
What is moving like single sign? What 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 does it look like for Jonathan? Oh boy. Jazz, Probably what they doing now? Shit, I don't know. Jonathan boring as fuck. So that's what I'm saying. He just smoked <laughs> weed. Like he's. I'm trying to give him the depression route. I don't know what is he's he's boring. I mean, I think it's like with trying to keep up with his relationship with Nancy because there's expectations might be the reason why he smokes a lot to where he causes, which could cause him depression. So maybe if they were to break up, he doesn't feel like he has to live through those expectations to where he can calm down, go to school where he lives so he doesn't have to leave his family. Realistically, if they were to break up, it would be better for him. <clears throat> so I'm just saying. Because he's, yeah. he's, he's definitely... I feel like he's overthinking the situation. Uh, as, yeah, as absolutely. Yeah. Comes to it because he's, you know, he's he's putting things <clears throat> in place that haven't happened. That's not going on. He's, you know, just he's creating scenarios in his head and he's yeah. reacting to those scenarios, shutting down the situation before he even get into it. Exactly. It's kind of sad. It is. It is sad. It got to be a horrible life to live. Self sabotage. Um, I, I think y'all know my ledge. Uh, I'm definitely sticking with it. I don't give a fuck what y'all feel and how many Game of Thrones episodes y'all watched. I, this is a top three moment in television for me. I'm curious what number one and two are. I don't know. I just know it. It's, he's just it's saying that. Three. Just he he just yeah. needed a ledge and he said that to to have his no, ledge because ain't no, no way in hell you think that's it. top three. Jason said, "Oh, oh this the ledge right I here." I don't watch two. I mean, I'm saying as far as when it comes to, I mean, I mean, honestly, I don't. It's not that much TV I'm watching, but it's like of the shit that I watch. Yes, that's up there. Uh, it's not. I can't think of a moment in The Wire where I was like, "Oh my god!" It was just a great show. It wasn't a now. Thrones definitely had some um, some moment. Like I said, the one Jazz brought up that was that was definitely a moment. But like I said, this Battle of the Bastards, Hard Home. There, there was no. I bought Battle. What, what did you know about the Battle of the Bastards? You said what? In Battle of the Bastards, what didn't you know was going to happen? What What didn't you think was going to happen? We I'm thought gonna we okay. thought John Snow was out of here. He did. Nah, I, that for that. I, I thought he was out of here. No, you do. Okay. Wait, Chris, are you a Day One Thrones watcher? I don't know what that means, Jess. I watched the show. I'm not, I, I didn't watch it. You back don't in know that Day One. I didn't watch it in two thousand. I know it. Did you I didn't watch, watch it when, when, when they, it first when they initially watched. No, I didn't watch it when it first came out. No. Okay, then. Yeah, I never would have. That John being out of here never crossed my mind in that episode. Did you think he's gonna die the first time? It, it, it probably didn't think it probably didn't cross your mind when he got stabbed up neither. Well, when he got stabbed up, that kind of fucked me up. But then I was just like, the red woman is there, so she's gonna bring him back to life. Even though I had to wait a whole year, so I was just like, John's coming back. I knew John wasn't gonna be permanently out of here, but when he killed John's brother, because this dumb motherfucker did not zigzag, I said, damn. But then I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I, knew, I, knew, I knew he he had to die just to to, to make it make he it. did and he did yeah, an, was, an emotional that was, impact that was, that was the trap that was the it trap. wasn't even that yeah. nobody cared about him he was that one Stark nobody cared about but the red wedding that shit the Jason. red wedding is another <laughs> that's we named yeah. like three yeah Jason Again, said when no, I when I watch no when I want no because when I watch TV I don't watch TV how y'all watch it so it's not a thing so I wanted I wanted the brother to die I wanted him to die I did not like die. the mom at that point so it wasn't a shock I was like yes thank God they finally got killed because it was just like a situation of you know what you know what's at stake Jazz you know relax Jack, calm down no because <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying no no, see, no seriously seriously you know what's at stake you know what's going on and in that situation. The mama allowed him to do what he wasn't supposed to do. And he married that girl, and he wasn't supposed to get involved with her. And it was just like, eventually, it's going to come back. And I'm, it's, that's how that show was set up. Anything you do is going to come back. It's going to bite you in your ass. I'm like, whenever it happened, I cannot wait because, Rob, you're a dumbass. You was doing everything right, and now you're moving wrong. So it ha it has to happen. So it wasn't, that's what that wasn't a shock for me. Love. I was more shocked with Arya um, shocking them with the, the, you know, the, the, the face thing. Um, then them was getting killed at the Red Wedding. I didn't give a fuck about that. I was glad it happened. I've never Jason, heard no one say that about the Red Wedding. I know. I know. Jason, Jason was on <laughs> one day. Uh, one, uh, I was not. A day one fan. Day one I wasn't. Either, so. so it hit you harder because you was day one fan and you was so heavily invested on those that years. That shit fucked me just... up because I've never seen a show where you see a pregnant woman get stabbed in the stomach the way that she did. That shit fucked me up. That's like fun. I watched that shit at work. And I'm sitting. Oh, you. Like, look, 
Yeah, I, I was like, because they killed what three main characters in like five minutes. So, well, the wife wasn't a main character, but the two Starks definitely were. Yeah, and Arya was about to reunite with her family, and they got killed. Yeah, I was emotionally invested in Thrones, so the impact that it had on me obviously is a lot different than y'all. Yeah, and y'all haven't seen Breaking Bad either, so that's another. If if y'all was watching yes, I that, I would. You seen I've Breaking seen Bad? It. So it's yeah, a couple just, of moments. It's a couple of moments in Breaking Bad I would put yeah. as top moments too. I don't, I don't follow. I don't follow too many white people like this. So no, I didn't watch Breaking Bad. I'm sorry. Didn't you? Uh, what did you talk about? Helen Hunt last week. What Helen Hunt? Yeah, she was in. She was in the, I mean, she was in the, in the movies. Mad about you. Mad about. Mad about you. About you. I watched it. Yeah. Yeah, no. Since we are discussing Thrones, <laughs> gentlemen, what are y'all Link of Thrones for episodes five through seven? Uh, I'll start. Wait. David Harbour. Uh, David Harbour, of course, he played in Black Widow. Um, I know I sort of trashed that movie a little bit and my super serum joke jazz tried to step on it last week. But uh, yeah, he was in Black Widow, uh, which came out last week. He was the Red Guardian. And you know, Marvel is uh, one of our favorite genres of movies, so I just figured that would be my Lake of Thrones this week. I don't like that jazz. I, I was going to say a rolling <laughs> joke, but I said I'm a chill. Jason, who is your Lake of Thrones? Um, um, let me think about that. Hold on, hold on. Hold I will on. go, since it seems like you're doing oh, yeah. some Oh, Googles. I got it. Uh, I got it, actually. Um, it is Rob Morgan. Um, this is um, this is the cop, the uh, the black the cop. The fine one. Uh, yeah. Oh shit! Um, you talking about the the chief? Officer Power. Damn. Officer Power. Uh, yeah. Um, is it? You know, we know him from Daredevil. He was Turks in Daredevil. He's the he's Urban Senior in Winning Time. But the reason I'm going to shout him out because we seen a dope ass trailer for Smile. He's in there um, as well. So <laughs> it's gonna be. Dope, dope, dope. I thought she was talking about the other cop. I was about to say, oh, let me go watch what other movie he's in. Look at you, bro. You was he even in this episode? Yes, yes he was, was at that oh. house. See? Oh. And he has light brown eyes. Um, so you How you see that and you can't see with your broke ass eyes? Uh-oh. Jason, I see your bullshit all the time. <laughs> I am going to say Molly Bobby Brown who was 11, she was in Godzilla. That is my Link of Thrones. Her, her name's Millie. Oh, that okay. <laughs> but y'all knew that Bobby Brown at the end, so you know who it was. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely did that right before this uh, episode. Um, yeah, is there anything else we didn't touch on, gentlemen? Um. I guess that's a no because y'all got real. I quiet. think there's everything in there, but what 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 do y'all have any expectations from about what's about how this season will end? Let's let's do that because I know we do the um we you know we talked about who we think gonna die, but what what do y'all anticipate happening? What, what do y'all think this storyline is about to go? Um, like we did get some some information, um, Chris, about what the storyline is heading um, timeline wise, but I don't want to touch that because I know Jazz may not know, um, but. What do y'all think is going to happen with um, with Vecna um, and with our with our core? Honestly, I can truthfully say I have no idea. I don't know if Vecna is going to be like they're going to get him out of here by the end of the season, or if he's going to carry over until the next season. Um, I'm expecting a huge death. I don't know who it's going to be. I have thoughts about who it's going to be, but I feel like they're going to switch it up on us so i don't know i'm just i'm just excited I, like i said i ain't watching no trailers i'm just sitting back waiting for next weekend just gonna watch it i have no idea what's going on. what about you jess yeah i haven't even thought about it and i'm staying away from any type of trailers i think it's going to be multiple big deaths because we have so many people that can get up out of here and multiple people in different areas i you know we already already said who i think is going to be um well, no, I said the weakest link, but yeah, I, I think we're going to lose a few people. And I honestly, I don't think Vecna is going to be out of here um, in this second, this part two. Yeah. I think he's going to, he's going to roll over into the final season or no, yeah. it's five is in the final season, right? But yeah, no, that's, that's the finale. The next the, season. So, that's a, that's so five is done. Yeah. Five I think, is done. 
I think either Vecna is going to roll over into season five or we're going to realize who is behind Vecna. Mm -hmm. Because I remember Dustin mentioned Vecna is the general. Right. So it might be somebody else out there doing some plotting that's, um, that Vecna is working with or working under. But yeah, I don't, I don't think Vecna is going to get out of here um, <clears throat> next week. But we'll see. Man. Uh, it's what gonna be got, interesting. It's, it'll be interesting to see. Um, it's definitely gonna be interesting to see. I'm definitely, you know, the wheel storyline is something that we still um, that's still unraveling, <clears throat> so we can see what what's going on. Because you know, based on what we've seen here, um, just based on the the way one Vecna, how that shit played out, you know, you know, will could be, you know, that same exact how Vic the Creole's son was. You know, we don't know mm. what he what he got going on. He you know, he, he's always he's felt like the outcast since the beginning. Uh, like I said, and you can see his development is a little bit different from the other kids and his his storyline. And like I said, he keeps on he he has something that he wants to talk about, but he, he hasn't got into it. So we, we keep going back into, you know, his his love for for Mike, but it could be a complete misdirect. Um, as far as when it comes to it, because like I said, and, and the reason I say that is more so because of how um, how one was with his his manipulation. The entire time he's feeding these things and implanting, and you really, you know, as we watching it, if you watch it, give it face value, it's like, okay, so you know, we see what's going on, and we can't, we we've not trusted Doctor Brenner uh, for quite some time anyway. So that miss that that in complete misdirect on the rewatch, like man, this dude been feeding her bullshit from from day one whenever he introduced himself and like you know how it actually came to us so there's no telling where will may go and in that situation like we got one thing and i feel like it may be a situation where he was like you know i'm the one that's been causing these issues or the problems like when i got you know taken into the upside down this was my creation this was my thought this is something i drew out these are my plans and i just want you to be with me to take over the world type thing you know as far as when it comes to it with mike um and that's when i go back into the killing mike um and you know him finally saying he loved l and that'll be a that'll be a dope little dope little bow in the river for you guys that'd be a huge twist <laughs> i would be so pissed would be, if will I'd was like wait yes i'd be like wait a minute you go back and watch what? season one, like, how did that happen? You had all but, this power, but you was watching L get bullied? Yeah, I'd be like, <laughs> that's, but that's, that's, you said he's a sideline friend, so that would be his thing. And that, yeah. I mean, that would be where that, that whole entire situation from, and it may be even be in the thing of it's developing um, inside of him. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. A lot of different ways it can go. I don't know, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I can't wait. Um, so what else we got? I think that's it. I think we pretty much covered everything. Any last words from y'all? No, man. Just um, like I said, we do appreciate everybody who's listening that do not watch these shows. We do appreciate y'all, um, but I also appreciate those who watch because they enjoy these shows and. Um, like I said, if you like what we're doing, please like, share, subscribe, um, let us know. Um, if there's something that you feel like we may need to look into or maybe review, let us know. Uh, we have last say in that, but we, we, we always hear you out. I'm, I'm always <laughs> Absolutely. <with this. laughs> and if anybody got any show movie suggestions that we should review, we'll hear you. We'll listen. We'll take it into consideration. Yeah, no promises, but you know, we listening. <laughs> Cause I, we was talking about tra- probably doing acrimony as a like a bonus episode. Y'all looking at me like, "Fuck no, jazz." That yeah. was a joke. That no was a little way, jokey no joke. No way in hell we are doing Tyler Perry movie. We throwing bricks. Yeah. In. I'm trying to throw bricks and Madea around this bitch. So y'all not, watching. y'all not. We ain't giving no Tyler Perry. No. Taraji you know, driving to the trailer. Shout out, shout out to Tyler Perry. You know he, you know, he keeping the black actors, uh, but he needs to hire some black writers, maybe some women writers. I know writing. maybe. He needs to stop writing. <laughs> he needs to stop writing because that's, yeah. that's a, it's a bit it's a bit much at this point. Jason, we can't be bashing TP. Not on episode three. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we can because you see, good. Chris is not supportive this week. But when he said I, some I, shit last week, I no, was supportive. I, I just no. Good job, Jason. He's such a hater. Nah, that fake ass. Congratulations. Hate this nigga.
But um, <laughs> I've been chilling all episode.